time ago I heard a quote, I don't remember who said it, but it was that if, if, if you can't find anybody worth voting for, you have an obligation to run. And, and so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, and I want to give people a choice. You know, a lot of times people hold their nose. They vote for the lesser of two evils. I don't like doing that. Well, I'm really impressed with what you're saying. I've never seen or heard of you before. But I want to know what your viability is within the state of Connecticut's party structure. No, I think I'm viable. You're going to have a hard time. Why? Because you're not part of the party apparatus. Well, who says I have to be part of the party apparatus? I mean, what, what good is it, Ben? How many people have we elected that were part of the party apparatus that have let us down? But you know, do you know how to get the nomination? Yeah, just get the support, get the votes. You know, you have to have the support of the town committees and of the structure. And if you don't have that, you can't get the nomination. Well, let's hope I can get the support, but if I can, I can always get it from the voters, right? I can, we can have a, we can have a primary. If, yeah. well, you know what, I, I never thought it was going to be easy, but I think the country is worth fighting for. And I think that it's important that I win. You know, it's not as, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to be fine, right? I mean, I own gold. My money's in, I, I have my money in court. I'm not going to get wiped out in this financial crisis. But most Americans will. And, you know, I think it's, you know, this, you know, this could be a great country. It was a great country. We were founded on great principles. I don't want to see that collapse. One time, you know, people thought, you know, when Reagan ran, they, there's no way he could get elected. And if it wasn't for the disastrous economy brought about under under Carter, and, and he never could have been. He never could have been elected. The country had to be in real trouble before they would turn to someone like Reagan. Now, we're going to be in much worse trouble now after Obama. So, I mean, I think i got a chance. <laughs> See, the problem is we've created a, noble, a nobility in Congress. Right. These guys are there for life. They lord over us from Washington like we're some peasants, you know, at their court. We gotta change that mentality. People need we need a citizens legislature, right? Like people go to Congress, they're there for a few years, then they leave. Right? We don't want career politicians. It shouldn't even politics shouldn't be a career. Right? Nobody should have a career in politics. Politics should be a public service, right? It should be more like jury duty. You know, we're going to the army. It's not something that you should be doing forever. The, the argument that's made against term limits is that we might lose some good people. I'm willing to take a shot. <laughs> I, I mean, all right, you know. There isn't a single senator in the United States Senate right now that has a clue what's going on. Somebody needs to go there and let them know that they are the source of our problems. And every single thing that they've done has been wrong. And what they need to do is they need to abandon every single political, uh, you know, instinct that they have, and just do the opposite of what they've been doing. They got to be like George Costanza from Seinfeld. You know, they just had hearings in Washington to try to figure out why there was a financial crisis. Now, I, I called them, I sent letters, I wanted to test it. Like after all, I'm the guy that predicted it. You know, why not ask me why there was a financial crisis? The reason they didn't want me there is they, they don't want the truth. But they don't want somebody sitting there pointing their finger directly at Congress and saying, you're the reason why, and here it is. You know, and, and, and blaming the Federal Reserve and blaming our elected leaders. So I want to go to Washington and hold them accountable for the mess this country is in and see if they're up to the challenge of making amends and doing what's right for a change and not take a poll and not worry if doing the right thing means that they don't get reelected. Because you know what? It's not that bad in the private sector. You know, it's not that bad to have to work for a living. And what I really want to do if I get the Senate is I want to lead the charge not to increase the debt ceiling. You know, if we have a debt ceiling, and every time we get to it, we just raise the ceiling. I mean, what kind of ceiling is that if you keep raising it? But what I want to do, if I can lead a filibuster in the Senate and say no to increasing the debt ceiling, they've got no choice. They have to cut spending. They can't raise taxes because you have to pass a tax increase. So if they can't borrow money, they can't spend it, they have no choice, they have to cut. So if we put their back to the wall, see they always say, well, we have to raise the debt ceiling or we'll shut the government down. Shut it down! <laughs> Otherwise, right now they're shutting the country down. I'd rather shut the government down. How are you going to convince the uh, people of Connecticut that the last place we ought to send Dick Blumenthal is to Washington? Well, that should be easy. We live in Connecticut. Look at, the, look at what he's done here. I mean, I think, look, Dick Blumenthal is an ideal opponent for me. I mean, it's going to be almost as fun as running against uh, uh, Chris Dodd. The thing is, nobody likes 
politicians, and no one likes lawyers. And he's both. <laughs> and look at what he's done. I mean, what has he done in the 20 years that he's that he's been in? in you know, he's the second highest ranking elected official in the state that is, you know, per capita the most indebted of any other state. He's part of that. He can't abdicate responsibility. Look at his department. It's grown like a cancer. Do you want to know how many lawyers are now working in the Attorney General office compared to when he first started? So what is he going to say? Send me to Washington because I specialize in growing government and suing people? Like, yeah, we're in an economic crisis. How do we, we're going to sue our way out of this mess? We have to do it right now. Now people say that we're, you know, we're putting these uh, problems on our grandchildren. No, we're not. Our grandchildren are not going to pay for these debts. We're going to pay for these debts. The federal government is not issuing 30-year government bonds to pay for all this debt spending. They're issuing T-bills, right? The average maturity on the national debt is three years. About one-third of the debt, one-third of that 12 trillion, and this is going to be 14 trillion in one more year because we just raised the debt ceiling by two trillion dollars, and that's only going to hold us for a year. But one-third of that 12 trillion dollars comes due in the next year. We owe that money. Now, right now, what we're hoping is that the people who have loaned us that money will roll that debt over, meaning when the bonds mature, they're not going to ask for their money back. They're going to loan it to us again. But what if they don't? What if they don't want to do that? Then we're going to have to deal with the problems. And I think that's going to happen. That debt crisis is going to happen sometime in the next couple of years. We're going to be facing this reality. Right? The real Greek tra tragedy is not going to unfold in Europe. It's going to unfold right here. You know, one of the problems that we had during the housing bubble was a lot of people took out adjustable rate mortgages. Now, why did they do that? Well, they did that because they got teaser rate. They got to make a low payment for a while, and that enabled them to overpay for a house. They didn't, you know, they weren't worried about the reset four or five years later because they were going to be rich by them because the house was going to go up. So they were going to take advantage of these low payments. Uh, in the short run. Well, that's exactly the same mistake that our government has made on a national level funding the national debt. But, you know, I wouldn't have voted to to, re, to reconfirm him. The problem is, you know, had we not confirmed Ben Bernanke, it's possible that we might have got somebody even worse. Because I'm sure if there is someone who could be a, do a worse job, a President Obama would find him <laughs> and, and, and put him in there. But, you know, I mean, maybe he could have put, I, I, he could have put um, Paul Volcker in. Because Paul Volcker did an excellent job as Fed Chairman when he was there. In fact, the reason that we, the economy did so well during the 1980s is because of the policies of Ronald Reagan and Paul Volcker. Because we had a Fed Chairman who was independent, who raised interest rates when it wasn't popular, and a politician who stood behind him. You know, that's what we need now. Unfortunately, we've got the exact polar opposite in Ben Bernanke and, and, and Barack Obama, which is why the next 10 years are going to look nothing like the 1980s. And so Bernanke is a student of the Great Depression, apparently, but if he was my student, I would have failed him. He, he didn't learn anything. I mean, unfortunately, the Great Depression was a, a result of government mistakes. You know, it was not that, you know, the, the conventional wisdom is that Hoover did nothing, and so we had the Depression. Hoover was the most interventionist president up until his time. He did not do nothing. He did everything he could to artificially stimulate the economy and bragged about it. His Secretary of the Treasury urged him to do nothing, and he ignored that advice, and he acted, and he got the Depression started. When Roosevelt came in, he took Hoover's policies and expanded them, and, and that's what made the Depression last so long. But if you go back to the Depression of 1920, which very few people know about, because we had one then. The initial decline in the stock market in 1920 was bigger than 1929. The contraction in GDP was bigger than 1929. But because the government did nothing, we were out of it very quickly. I, I was disillusioned with the Republican Party a long time ago. I mean, I was a big supporter of Ronald Reagan. I had a poster of him in my, in my college dorm when I went to